Hey, real quick, before we get started, CityCast Philly is getting ready for something big, our one-year anniversary. Join us on Wednesday, August 30th at 6 p.m. at the Indy Hall Clubhouse in Northern Liberties. We're going to tape an episode of the show, then have some drinks and refreshments for you, and it's all free. Head to the link in our show notes or visit tinyurl.com slash ccphilly to RSVP. Okay, here's the show. Today on CityCast Philly. Whether you have a car or not, everyone in Philly has an opinion about parking. There's official regulations in the city, and then there's those unwritten rules about parking, legal or otherwise. CityCast Philly lead producer Laura Benchoff and producer Abby Fritz are here with me to talk about some of the hacks to finding the perfect parking spot in the city. It's Tuesday, August 29th. I'm Trina Nuri, and here's what Philly's talking about. Hey, Abby. Hey, Laura. Hey, Trina. Hey, Trina. Abby, you just got a new car. Yes, I did. I'm Woo-hoo. so excited to have a car here in the city. I am a little nervous because of all of the things I don't know. Philly driving is wild, so I'm glad I'm here with you guys so you guys can give me all of the best advice on on how I can actually find a parking spot around here. We're glad to help. We have many years of practice <laughs> in this recording studio. Perfect. So I, I, I'll start off with a question. I have seen some wild things in my short time here driving. I've seen people parking on the sidewalk. I've seen people in the medians. Mm-hmm. What's going on? You you got to break it down for me. What What's happening here? So a wild thing about Philly is that there are areas of the city where if you park illegally, you will get a ticket almost instantly. And there are parts of the city where if you park illegally, like you're saying, parking on the sidewalk is not legal. Parking in the median on, on Broad Street, sort of south broad, people park in that like striped yellow strip in the middle of the road, technically illegal. And now bike lanes. And bike lanes. Right. Like there's all these places that you're not supposed to park. But there's almost a kind of like looking away. Like enforcement just doesn't happen because it would Mm. upset people too much. That's the story (laughs) of the parking on the South Broad Median. Like it's like a couple hundred spots is what I read in, in a news article. Like it's a lot of spots. That's a lot of people's cars. I find that spot really dangerous and kind of scary because you're literally like there's two lanes of traffic on either side and you have to kind of like dart through traffic to get to your car. Hmm. But, you know, if people have to drive for work and it's an open spot, they'll take it. And and yeah, there's just an understanding that that might not get ticketed. There is a similar space on Broad Street in North Philly on Susquehanna Avenue between Susquehanna and Dolphin Street where cars will park in the middle of Broad Street. (laughs) And this is also an area where there's businesses, Mm. but because there's no parking lots in this neighborhood, you kind of have to just wing it and risk it. (laughs) Because you know, Broad Street is crazy. There's Mm. buses flying by, cars, ATVs, motorcycles, and I'm not trying to get hit, so. yeah. Yeah, it's like you're saying, Trina, it's almost like there's these areas where you can just see the rules change, like North Philly on Broad, South Philly on Broad, like Center City, you would get a ticket immediately if you tried to park Ill- illegally. But if you kind of go out in the neighborhood and you sort of look, like, look around and see what other people are doing, you can kind of pick up on what's acceptable in that area what people or what people have to do if they don't have other options in these different parts of the city. For the sidewalks, I you know I, I did check the regulations before this conversation. That is also definitely illegal. If you get a ticket, it will be a fifty-one dollar fine from the PPA, from the Philadelphia Parking Authority. Wow. But again, depending on where you are, it might not really be enforced. Yeah, I've also heard a lot about savesies. Can you guys explain this to me? Ooh, savesies! It's a tradition in our city. Yes, savesies essentially means that. I have decided 
as a citizen in this city that this and this is my space. Do not put your car in my space. If I've shoveled, if I've, <laughs> I've been sweating and like freezing my ass off just to shovel this spot out, you do not put your car in my space. So I'm going to find a cone that I got from who knows where, a chair, a folding chair, (laughs) a trash can, (laughs) some blue recycling bin, and that is going to indicate to you that this is my space, Abby, and you dare not park (laughs) in there. What what happens? Or we're going to have to fight. Oh, oh, that's what happens. You, yeah, yeah, you don't. The peace will be disrupted if you move the cone. Oh, wow. This is a risk you are running, as Chanae said. It's like, mm-hmm. especially if you're trying to move a cone in your own neighborhood, people know know you. You could be getting into a fight with a neighbor. You don't want to do that. Oh, my god. Or gosh. they're going to mess up your car. Or they'll key your car. Yeah. <gasps> no. It's like, it's like that, you know, you don't want to like you know, piss off the serving staff because you don't know if they're going to like mm-hmm. spit in your food. Like do yeah, not exactly. piss anyone off when it comes to parking. So don't mess with savesies. Don't okay. mess with savesies. It's it's wild out there. And it's also sometimes you're like driving around. You think you see an open spot. You pull up next to it and there's just like a cone or recycling bin and you just got to keep going. The question really is, where do people get the cones? <laughs> you Probably from the road. I don't know. They're always busted, too. They are always busted. I will also say this is technically illegal, but everyone, not everyone, a lot of people do it. I did look this up, and occasionally people will get ticketed for it or, like, the cones will get moved. I was reading an article this morning. They ticket the cone? Like They know what I... I think maybe they were just... They were just repoing the cones. There was an article in, like, Northeast, like, Holmesburg area, and it was the cops were driving around being like, We've got a lot of complaints about savesies. You know, this is illegal. We're just going to take back all these cones. And they took back like 100 or 200 cones. Oh. And then they had to stop because they didn't have any more room in the car. Oh. Um, <laughs> That's so ridiculous. I don't know. I imagine it did not uh, really help. But, you know, they were trying something. Oh gosh. That's so funny. That's funny. All right. So we're going to give you some more hacks and top tips so that you don't get one of those envelopes that say violation. (laughs) One of the tips I would say, you know, obviously you got to watch out for any major event that comes through the city, whether that's a sporting event, if the Pope decides to come back, just park as far away from it as you can. (laughs) Now with sports events, you got to get there somehow so either you could take public transportation or you can do a ride share. But ride share would be probably just as much as just parking in the parking lot. So mm. maybe try to take public transportation during a major event. Totally. Totally. Yeah, I feel like half the tips are going to be like, don't drive sometimes <laughs> just because there are times it's harder. Like, I know generally for me, if I have to be out and about in a car, I try to get back before like seven just because after everybody comes home from work, the parking is that much more competitive. It's that much harder to get a spot. You might be circling for 30 or 40 minutes. So if you can kind of like keep your driving to times when like not everybody's trying to come home and park, that is a is or has been a big help for me. I think that is that is a key that what Laura said is the competitive nature because mm. parking is so scarce. <laughs> you got to be aggressive. <laughs> mm. So yes. um, when you find a spot, get it you see somebody's taillights come on in a parking spot people just wait oh my god just wait for that car to pull out so you can take it wow i don't know if y'all have ever done this before but i will almost like hunt people that are coming out of places (laughs) and then like i see them walking and i'm slowly creeping it oh man it's like really it's like weird but and then i ask them hey are you leaving? They're like, no, we just got here. I'm like, ah, damn. Let me circle the block. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's a great tip. I would also say it's kind of worth it to get a parking permit. If you have permitted spots in your neighborhood, if you have to do street parking, it's only like $35 a year. And it unlocks a lot more of these spots that you would otherwise get a ticket in. And the tickets themselves are like usually at least 30 bucks. So if you can get it, get a permit. It'll just give you more options when you're trying to find a spot at the end of the day. 
Definitely. I feel like for those that don't know, Mm -hmm. how do you pay for parking? So I really like that in Philly, most of the meters, every area that has like metered parking will have like a little kiosk and you can pay with your card. But I really like the app. It's called Park Mobile. You like link it to your PayPal account or your credit card. And it's really useful because it keeps track of how much time you have left. So you Mm -hmm. get this app on your phone, you connect it to your license plate. You can pay for parking at a metered spot that way and it'll like text you if if you're running out of time. Mm -hmm. Or one hack that I have to do because I live in South Philly is if I'm driving around and there's no spot at night, I'll park in a metered spot on Broad Street. The meter starts at eight. I'm not gonna get up at eight but I can feed the meter on my phone that buys me two more hours to go move the car. So it's just nice. Nice. Um, Another tip I have not personally tried, but I am very interested in, if you are someone who loses your car, forget where you parked, Mm -hmm. put an air tag in there Mm. so that you will never question which side of the parking lot am I on? Where did I park? Like, especially if you're just not used to keeping tabs or you don't use your car that often, it's easy to forget. Mm. So that is a tip I am looking forward to trying. I literally spent like 20 minutes trying to remember where I parked the other day. So that would be incredibly helpful. Just grab your phone too and just take a picture (laughs) of the street sign. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. And I think too on like Google Maps and stuff, you can like drop a pin and mark it like parking like you parked there. Um, So sometimes I do that. But I'm always like, it's literally within like a three or four block radius from my place. And I'm like, how did I forget? Yeah. I've only, there's only so many places. You'd be surprised yeah. how long it can take to walk all those three or four blocks. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. I've gotten so many good tips from you guys. I do think I should get a permit. I think that's definitely the first move. So how do I actually go about getting a permit from the PPA? Yeah, it's it's not super hard, but you do need to prove where you live and you have to have a few pieces of documentation. So you need your vehicle registration and you need to prove that you live where you say you live because the permits are linked to different neighborhoods. So you'll see um, a number on the signs in different neighborhoods. Like no one can park here for more than two hours unless you have a permit for, you know, zone two or zone 12 or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, And so they kind of have to know that you live in that zone so you can bring like your driver's license, your lease, a utility bill, and these things just have to show the same address that you're asking for the permit from. Um, And your car has to be registered to your home address. So once you have all of that and go in, you pay the like 35 bucks for the first car. Mm -hmm. Um, One thing that is annoying is if you move within the city and you move zones, Mm -hmm. they make you show up in person to prove that you moved zones. So I had to go to the PPA office a couple years ago to do that. But at the end of the day, it's not that much money. It's basic it's cheaper than getting two tickets so i recommend it Hmm. absolutely so what do you guys think about parking garages versus street parking how how do they compare oh this is a good question abby because this i feel like this comes down to price and safety it is way cheaper to find street parking right it's a few bucks whereas garages or lots can run you from If you get there for those early bird specials, you can maybe pay $10, but it's usually Mm -hmm. $10 to maybe up to $35, $40 sometimes. But at the same time, with parking garages and parking lots, they're always there. And they're really great if you may be going out at night um, Mm -hmm. and you can't find parking because it is so so competitive and street parking um, gets kind of funky especially around samson street downtown um they Mm -hmm. sometimes close that area near gaberhood um Mm -hmm. where there's no cars and so it allows Mm -hmm. people just to kind of walk around so all the surrounding streets you know it's pretty tough to find parking downtown so parking lots parking garages are important but street parking also is cheaper not as safe as a parking garage. So you are kind of just letting the city have your car, (laughs) so to speak. (laughs) But one of my um, tips, if you're doing like business, you got to go downtown for some reason and you need to find a cheaper place to park, there's a section uh, on Ray Street between 13th and 11th. 
um, mm -hmm. about to get into Chinatown, there are sometimes there's spots there. It is metered mm -hmm. parking, but it's a lot cheaper than paying at the parking garages. Mm, great tip. So I've also heard about this um, mystical courtesy toad. Um, do you guys want to want to break it down for me? What is it? What happens if it happens to me? What, what do we do here? OK, I think this is a really good thing to be aware of. And I'm glad you asked about it, um, because this is basically when the city tows your car, even though you are parked legally, you are in a real spot, you are entitled to be there. But maybe there's a big event or there's some kind of work being done. And they need to move your car. And this happened to me once when I was living in West Philly. And it basically just feels like your car has been has disappeared or has been stolen. It can oh be a little God. bit scary. Um, and so I would say, like, my tips for that are definitely keep an eye out. Even if you don't move your car that often, maybe try to walk by it every once in a while. Because they will usually post those kind of, um, you know, posters or cardboard signs saying, hey, you know, we need to clear this this lane or these parked cars at this time. Keep an eye out for that because if you don't move it, they'll move your car. Mm -hmm. And the other thing to know is that uh, it's supposed to be pretty close. Like they say, um, you know, the the people that do this towing are the Philadelphia Parking Authority and the police department. And they say they generally try to keep the cars close, but they don't always do that. Sometimes they wow. tow them across the city. So oh if gosh. you want to find your car, and this is what I did to find my car when it got courtesy towed, is you have to start calling around to the local police precincts. And they should have a list of the cars that they moved and where they are. It doesn't it, They don't always get back to you right away. It can be a little bit scary. Sometimes if you just kind of walk around in your neighborhood, you can get lucky and find it. But, uh, you know, just be aware. It's one of these things. It can pop up. You might think your car is in a safe spot. But something's going on in that on that block and they need to move your car and your car just gets moved. So just, you know, got to keep tabs. I've seen it happen to someone and it's like panic mode. And um, oh as so you can scary. Imagine. So what they did, um, they moved the cars to a, to the local elementary school parking lot. So m that might be a great place to be the first place to look for your car. That's a good tip. That's when that air tag will come in handy. Mm. Yeah. If you get courtesy towed. Yeah, totally. All right. That was lead producer Laura Benchoff and producer Abby Fritz. Well, thanks so much, you guys, for all these tips. I'm I'm excited to be a new parker and driver in Philly. Yes. Good luck, Abby. Good luck out there. That's all for today here on CityCast Philly. If you enjoyed this episode about the city's parking rules, tell a friend, rate the show, leave us a review, and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to sign up for our morning newsletter, Hey Philly, to learn more about what else Philly's talking about. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Bye. Guys, I brought props for <laughs> nice little ticket. You have a ticket already? <laughs> I've gotten you just two. got a car. I've gotten two. Two.